Hello, Prim friends. This may look a little bit familiar to you. I am back at Bill Romy's Antiques, and it is an absolutely gorgeous Ohio day. So I thought, what better day to do an exterior garden video to show you all of the hardscapes, to show you kind of what is underneath where all of the, when the, you know, the flowers grow and expand, we don't get to see all these amazing pieces and what's put underneath so that we can really get a full appreciation of all what is here because this is just incredible and this has been I know a labor of love Bill said the shop has been here for 42 years the home is just stunning and I I my husband and I personally we have a couple of cats I have never seen so many concrete cats and they are so sweet he is here in the shade and so the moss is beautiful Sharon Township, Century Home, 1846. Isn't that just amazing? If, as we walk along here, you may see, oh, here's a little bunch right here. See the Lenten roses that are starting to come up? It's just beginning for us here in Ohio. There are some things that are hardier than others. Of course, the Lenten Roses or Hellebores are called Lenten Roses because around that time of the year is when they will start to pop. So. Beautiful piece that will be a water feature and the hitching post. I want to bring you back in the summertime when all the flowers are up and the greenery is covering over some of these hardscape pieces. Look at the size of that millstone. The, the step area here. You can see the irises peeking through. Just stunning. So I will put the contact information uh, in the description below for uh, William Romy's shop. One thing I really notice here, he has a cream color on the pickets of the fence and then a much darker color for the corner in between pickets. It really is a nice, a really pretty offset. And there's the boot scraper right there. These beautiful bricks. He said, I know he told me the name now twice and it has left me. Look at those concrete animals there. Um, these are, they kind of have a shine to them. They're about two inches thick, he said. And because they have that sheen, they were, um, they were made probably having to do with um, you know, the subway tiles, but because of that sheen, they don't absorb the water, and so you don't get that awful 
spalling that happens where the bricks actually deteriorate because of the because of the water getting inside the masonry and then um, freezing and sort of exploding actually from the inside out. Look at this moss. But see the moss doesn't grow on these two inches thick. Can you imagine the, the weight of all of those? Just so, so beautiful. And these amazing millstones or grinding stones, again, like we saw in Jamie's, in Jamie's yard. No, got the stone rooster back there. So yeah, I really wanted to to bring you here to see this before all the growth of the of the greens that will start. I know our property does not have really any infrastructure of landscaping at all. We have our flower farm, of course, but nothing else beyond that. And so we are starting with a completely blank slate. Like Bill said, he's been doing this here in this location for 42 years. 42 plus 50. Hmm. <laughs> I better start. I better start uh, moving rocks sooner rather than later. Love that little section of a of a split rail fence there. Just because. So I'll go along and over this way. You know, I've said before with antiques and with decorating, there's really something to be said for the layering. You know, there's not just one stone set against the, the rock wall. There's several stones and then stones on top of stones. A nice little boxwood there with some green. That's green all year long here. There's just something so special about that, that moss. Bill said sometimes it just gets to be too much and he actually pulls it off of some of the, some of the stones. The one thing you have to be careful of is it can get slippery. But I think if you're mindful of it, you just pay attention and watch where you're walking. Love it. Oh my goodness, look here. I see some lilies of some sort coming up there. Maybe day lilies. And check this out. This huge cauldron like. And that is a working fountain in the spring and summertime. Can you imagine the sound? I'm looking forward to seeing it then as well. And then this charming little tool shed or potting shed here in the corner. And more of those sweet, sweet cats and those stone 
rooster and chicken. It's beautiful. There are 250 acres of park that surrounds Bill's property here. And he is nestled in here just beautifully. These, these bricks are just amazing. Love the sound of the bird. Just had to be quiet so she could share her music with us. We'll go this way and take a look inside the garden from this direction. So William Romy Antiques, it's H-R-O-M-Y. My understanding, it does, he does not have a Facebook presence or an online presence, but you can find his shop in Sharon Center, Ohio. Check out this crock here for the hose. You know, I, I told him I've come across ones like that before. He said there was a huge crock that he had the opportunity to purchase. And it had the bottom uh, dropped out of it already, you know, however long before. But for use outside to hold the hose, you know, it can't, doesn't, it won't crack more. And you don't need the bottom if you're using it just to hold just to hold the uh, hose. You see this beautiful dark Lenten rose here. And the trough just covered in that beautiful moss. little corner of crocuses and see some little irises there some coral bells There's a gorgeous beeskeep, a stone beeskeep over here I noticed from the other direction. That is stunning. I want to say Seville, someone in this area was a stonemason and had done some of these um, for several years. I'm not sure if this is one of his or not, but his work was exquisite. And again, another beautiful little patch of the hellebores. So I hope as you see these pieces here, that you're thinking of how you can create these hardscape pieces in your garden long before it's time to actually start planting the flowers.
And there's a little crack, a little jug there in the corner. So sweet. And he's on a, this is a busy street. But I can imagine that when the water is running in that fountain in the back there that you probably don't even notice it. I wonder what the what the vine is that's growing there. Gorgeous. Just area after area after area. There's another and another and another. Beautiful bench here. And the well pump. The holly bush. I believe that's a, that's got to be some sort of a holly. So if you're in the area, Bill's going to be doing a reset in his shop. But if you're in the area, he is open when he's in town. Uh, the shop is always open Monday through, I think, yeah, Monday through Sunday. I will make sure that I have, I will make sure that I have the hours available for you. But if you're in the area, don't hesitate to stop. This shop is only about 20 minutes from... Seville Antiques. And it is definitely one of those destination locations not to be missed. So a couple upcoming things also to let you know what to be watching for. And you will want to subscribe so that you um, get that notification when that video comes out. Um, Friday, March 10th, there are over 50 dealers setting up for the Hudson Antique Show, and I will be doing a video from there the evening before to give you a little peek. There are also several shops out in the Canfield area, one that I've not uh, brought a video to you before from that I'll be doing while I'm there as well. So that one should be coming for you here this weekend, probably on Sunday. So keep watching. I hope where you're at, you are having a glorious first day of March. Take care, everybody. Keep watching. We'll see you in the next one.